my pocket. Okay. In pocket is probably better. Yeah. So you turn it on in the back. Okay. All right. Good. All right. I probably should have a clock. All right. We are two minutes late, so we should probably start as soon as he turns on the mic. Welcome to the IRTF overview. Let me know if you can hear me in the back. Okay, good. Uh, over the years, I've managed to get a louder voice, so. Okay, so um, uh, this is the first time we've given this, um, and I uh, will be happy to, give clar to answer clarifying questions along the way, if you have any. Um, and I warn you now, I have a lot of silly pictures, so. Uh, so first of all, <clears throat> um, you'll start, you probably have seen this already, but you'll start to see this if you're new here, which is the note well. And the um, important thing is that the IRTF follows the ITF intellectual property rights rules. So here is your note well for this. I don't think we have discussion in here necessarily that applies, but if we do, we're under the, the note well. I mean, I think any IETF based discussion is under the note well. Um, and I'll talk some more about how that came to be and some of the history in a few moments. Uh, I'm Allison Mankin, by the way, and I'm the chair of the IRTF, and IRTF stands for Internet Research Task Force. So I wanted to start with a headline. For the first time in many years, every single IRTF group is meeting. I think everyone liked Prague. So if you hear anything you like, we're have, having a meeting this week. Um, and so please check these meetings out. Lots going on, and I'm going to talk about each of these groups a bit, but the established groups, a proposed group, the, the uh, PAN-RG, and an initial organizing meeting for a group uh, called DIN are all taking place. Um, so yay, right? IRTF Festival. Um, the origins of the IETF is the first topic, um, and um, it goes back a long way, actually. The IRTF... Um, as you probably know, the internet started from research projects. And so early on, there was a fairly close tie between research and engineering. Um, but in the beginning, there was a set of task forces. I'm calling this the task force era, and if, instead of the uh, prehistoric era. But um, this was um, starting about 1984, so in the very, very earliest days of the internet. Um, uh, there's a great historical reference to all this on IAB.org if you want to read more about it. There were many task forces at the beginning. The uh, ITF was um, one of them. There were also a, a privacy and security task force, an autonomous systems task force that was headed by Deborah Estrin, which is the origin of some of our very earliest routing ideas, many of them. Um, in 1989, there was a big reorg to kind of make these groups more functional as people realized that we would have more than just researchers involved. And we got the IETF, which you, you know about, I believe, the end-to-end -end task force, uh, which was um, a, a, a holdout for a long time that covered things like transport. It was the origin of some of the uh, quality of service, RSVP, a bunch of things. It was a place where a lot of the early internet media took place. Um, the IAB uh, and the IRTF. So the IRTF goes back to 1989, which is quite early in the IETF's time. And the IB, um, uh, IRTF and IETF were viewed as parallel groups in a lot of ways. And that's because of the research origins of all of this. Um, we have some RFCs if you want to read about how things work in the IRTF. Um, the, Earliest one is RFC 2014, which is way back there. It's, it's as early as the original, the formation of the IRTF. Um, the IAB eventually took on the role of structuring the IRTF to some extent, and there's an IAB RFC, RFC 4440, that covers what the role the IRTF does. Um, there's a document for publishing to describing how we do RFCs for the IRTF. Um, uh, Spencer, you know, I don't think I have your RFC here. 
Um, is that correct? What is your RFC that describes some of the informal qualities of the IRTF? IRTF primer for IETF participants. Right. Yeah. So I actually should have had that here. I clipped this from our, our website. Do do um, so. Look up Spencer Dawkins' document as well, which will give you a lot of the nice cultural background of the IRTF. And I will add it to the slides. Um, as I mentioned, we follow the note well, and also the IRTF follows the anti-harassment policies that IETF has developed. And um, I'm actually on the ombuds team, so we have a built-in ombuds person in the IRTF leadership. Um, so <laughs> the, the mission basically is that eventually we realized that there was long-term and short-term research or long-term and short-term development. And IRTF was the home of the longer-term work in the IETF. Um, and we were viewed, as, as I said, as a parallel organization to the IETF. Um, and so IRTF does not produce standards. It doesn't produce um, any, it produces experimental sometimes and informational, doesn't always produce documents. And we created it as a, a, a group of research groups. So just like the IETF has working groups, the IRTF has research groups. So that's kind of the mission and the overview of the, of the uh, structure. Um, so the relationships, um, it's complicated to understand the relationships of the I, IRTF. Um, our parent now, although it wasn't always our parent, is the IAB. Um, and I'll talk some more about the details of that relationship in a moment. The Internet Society is also a partner of the IRTF. Um, and I'm going to talk about several programs that we have that are close connections with ISOC. Uh, in addition, we have a budget which is managed by ISOC. Uh, the IETF itself, we have lots of ties to the IETF. One, as I mentioned, we share the intellectual property structure that the IITF has. Um, we also follow some of the other policies, um, and we follow the, the um, stream rules, and so on. We're with the same RFC editor. Um, but, uh, and I'm going to talk about research groups and their roles. They may have roles in relation to existing working groups. So the idea here is that by attracting, say, a bunch of crypto experts to the crypto forum, we actually provide a forum where ITF groups can go and say, could you solve this problem? Could you make a decision for me? Uh, an example of this is that the crypto forum did some work on uh, helping to determine what curve in ellipt elliptic curves would be the one that should be standardized in TLS. Um, and then also research groups as you might expect, as they work long term, eventually they may produce a spin off group that becomes an IETF working group. So that's another tight relationship between the IRTF and the IETF. And when I talk about some of the groups, I'll talk about that more. Um, details of the IAB relationship. Um, first of all, the IRTF chair is appointed by the, the uh, architecture board. So uh, they have a process for doing that. The IRTF chair becomes a member of the IAB ex officio. Um, that means that I don't vote, but because otherwise I'd be voting on who is the next IRTF chair, but I do actually participate in all the IAB activities. The IRTF chair does that. And that makes sense because the IAB looks, looks after long-term architectural considerations. And then the Internet Architecture Board is the one that manages the RFC editor functions and the RFC streams. So when we make a decision about how IAB, um, how IRTF is going to publish our work, the IAB is closely involved with that. Um, so we have lots of eyes there. We sometimes, for those of you who are new to the ITF, we sometimes call this the I star, all the different things that start with I, um, and people have appropriated that for other work, other uses. But I believe it was originated here when we got all these eyes: the ITF, the IAB, the IRTF the ISG, the IRSG. So we have a lot of I's and they all go under I star. I should have put a picture for that. Um, okay, I um, have only been the IRTF chair since March. Um, my predecessor was Lars Eggert, uh, who is a one, was a wonderful IRTF chair. And he, he presided over the IRTF from 2011 to, uh, to March. Um, and I've, been very happy to follow him in this role because he did some great things for the IRTF and I wanted to specifically mention him. In that picture, he's wearing his honorary 
um, tie-dyed lab coat, which was given to him as a parting gift by the iStar uh, to say goodbye to him. But he created two programs, the Applied Networking Research Prize and the Applied Networking Research Workshop that I'm going to talk about, which have been a very successful way for the IRTF to connect to the rest of the world. So those are the A star. Um, and he also did a great thing easing the path, easing the way that we create research groups. And I'll talk about that. So I look, for, look up to Lars and um, I wanted you to know about him. He, uh, he's around, he's actually co-chairing the quick working group and he's still participating in the IRSG. So say hello to him and tell him that he was a very good IRTF chair if you see him, okay? He probably won't be wearing that lab coat though. Um, so first of all, the prize. Um, we have a, uh, a program with funding to bring six uh, promising speakers, two per, e per ITF meeting from the academic world to, to present uh, applied network research here at the ITF with the idea that this research can captivate, raise discussion, and also that the researchers from that can, um, um, can get an, a sense of the ITF and then the IRTF and think about coming to work with us there. Um, and the clever thing about this is that it's based on previously published papers. So we put out a solicitation saying, have you published a paper where networking is covered, but where there's applicability to real world problems. I mean, there's a lot of theoretical networking papers. We would tend not to take those. Um, and an existing paper can be awarded and the person who submits it also makes a case for a speaker. So it's usually one of the younger uh, primary authors, typically someone who is either a grad student or a recently graduated recent PhD. Um, I believe our, our speakers are here in the audience today because I asked them if they would come. Um, and we will have a meeting where we feature the speakers for each IETF. So uh, we've had, we had um, different speakers in March. Uh, in, um, uh, on Thursday at the IRTF open meeting, we'll have Stephen Checkaway, who's going to talk about a security incident um, with um, dual EC. So it's a, a uh, very interesting paper. Stephen, do you want to raise your hand? Um, so please come to that. It's, these are great discussions and we really love, one of the things that's also nice about this is that ITFers tend to ask very incisive questions. So there's a lively discussion when we have these. And then the other is Philip Richter, um, who's going to talk about carrier grade NAT deployment measurements. Philip, are you in the audience too? Yes. Hi. Okay. So come and hear these great speakers. Join us for this, with this prize. We really enjoy this. If you have papers that you've published, and you want to submit, keep your eye open on the IRTF, I should have even put that, uh, sorry, the IRTF um, discuss mailing list um, for uh, announcements. We'll also announce it on the IETF list for announcements of the next set of submissions for that. And we have a peer review committee. If you're interested in joining that committee, you could also chat, talk to me about that. We also have the Applied Networking Research Workshop, which is once a year. It's been typically in the summers and you just missed it. It was yesterday. Um, however, you can read all the papers and you can see a recording of it. Um, this is a, uh, a, a sort of classic research workshop like I, and it's co-sponsored with ACM and with ISOP. So um, it's different between, um, from, a norm, from other researchers, research workshops is simply that it's more applied, we hope, and that the audience includes, again, these sort of lively ITF questioners. So yesterday's workshop had a lot of great questions. Those of you who are at it, you probably know that. And so please feel free to read these papers. There are a lot of great papers. And again, if you are interested, those are new papers, not previously published. We'll solicit um, uh, those in um, the next six months sometime. And there's both long and short papers. So we're, we're very happy to have more participation in this as well. Okay, so organizationally, we have a steering group. The chairs of the research groups and then some people who are at-large members. Um, we have a business meeting at each ITF. And we actually, that was air quotes. We actually do business, but we ha uh, there's a tradition that goes back to the beginning, you know, that um, picture that I showed you of the prehistoric days of uh, having a lot of, um, wine. So those business meetings are, are 
have a, a wine budget provided by, by different members. And um, I guess that helps for creativity, I hope. Um, <laughs> the IRSG also uh, is responsible for helping to advance the, the document. So the working group, the, the, a given research group will decide it's ready for its work to be published. And we'll ask the IRSG to produce several reviews. And then we'll ask the members of the IRSG to vote ready or not ready to help us decide if, if uh, it's had enough review. So this is a, a group, a good group. Um, so the members of the IRSG, now the at-large members, are listed here. Spencer there is one of them. I don't know if we have the others, any others in the room. Um, we have a few new ones. And then the, the chairs of the RG are also members. So um, it's a great group. It's almost as great as the Justice Society of America. And I'm not particularly favoring America there. I just happen to like those particular superheroes. So um, we try to be actually, um, we're trying to actually be as global as we can. So um, it's not a, as, it's definitely not an American centric group by any means. I'm gonna talk about the research groups now, I believe. Okay, so um, research groups. One of the great things about this is that research groups can have a lot of different identities. Um, they, uh, uh, one research group can do a, a number of these functions. Um, one of them is to be an incubator. You may or may not know that it's quite difficult to get work completed in the IETF because of IETF process, because of the extensive amount of reviewing, because of the so sort of tight focus that's required by the IESG, one of those I star, on the work. Um, research groups are freer to sort of rove and, and get into different areas to follow the promising directions. Not completely free. Um, one of the jobs of the, the, um, the, the at-large members and myself is to ask people to stay in a productive role, not to go everywhere, but but they can incubate new ideas. So that's one of the things. Another, as I mentioned before, is this expert support for the IETF. The uh, CFRG was the example I gave earlier that gives crypto, expert crypto analysis to groups that need it. We have the ICCRG, which is a congestion control research group that takes up the, heart, the really complex aspects of congestion control so that they don't have to be done by all the different groups that have to deal with congestion control. Um, the network coding group should be doing this. We need to get it into a better focus. If any of you work on network coding and have an interest in this, let me know because we're trying to re-energize that effort. There's a lot of interesting coding work, but we haven't been using that group as well as we might. Um, another thing is to identify things that we're not doing that we should be doing and to sort of give them some visibility so that IETF can decide, is this something that we should actually focus on? Um, in some ways, the IETF, because of its history, covers everything in the, in the internet at times and figure out which things actually are a good use of our time, which things are, are in need of the kind of engineering we do is something that the IRTF has been able to help with traditionally. Um, there's uh, a similar thing is, is if you have um, an emerging area that's coming out of academia or industry, it may be burgeoning in some, some particular industry, but is there a way that that ought to be thought about for the global internet. So we expect the IRTF to work on the big I internet um, and to look, look at questions that have global scope. And so this is a way that something that's going on, um, an example that's coming up is blockchain. So blockchain's being used in a lot of things. What are the ways that it scales to the whole internet? What are the ways that it doesn't scale? That's an example where something that's happening very actively in the outside world, you might think, why do we need to do this? It's because we have the expertise to look at this global question and understand how we might apply it in the way that would give it a different amount of um, applicability. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, future working groups sometimes come from research groups. So one example was the Reliable Multicast Research Group, which um, went on to form a uh, RMT, Reliable Multicast Transport Group, and produced several standards that are in play in the world. And then the um, uh, di uh, disruption tolerant networks, which started out as interplanetary networks um, and then got changed to delay tolerant networks and eventually disruption tolerant. And 
uh, DTN is a current working group that has spun off from a research group. And those are, are protocols which can survive not having connectivity for a long time. It started out with this interplanetary concept where you might not be able to get your signal through to Mars till you got into a certain orbital situation. But how do the protocols actually manage that situation in a kind of consistent way? So that's a really great example. Uh, Vince Cerf, who was one of the founders of everything here, started that and then it became a research group and then a working group. Um, and so the other thing that's nice about research groups, as I mentioned, is that they don't have a fi fixed process. They don't have to meet here if they don't want to. Uh, they often, some of the groups meet other places more often than they meet here. Uh, Gaia, catch it while you can because it, is, uh, it very rarely meets at the IETF. I'll describe them in a few minutes. Um, and they can also use whatever strategies they like for actually having a good discussion. So they don't have to be kind of presentation style or issue resolving. They can do it whatever way works best for their group. Okay, let's go into the particular working groups now. Um, I found a lot of science fiction pictures on archive.org, so that's what you're getting this time. I like science fiction a lot. So the first is the Crypto Forum. Um, the chairs of that are listed here. Unfortunately, I put an extra T in Kenny's name, so that will cause the encrypting of his name to fail. Um, but uh, they, have, um, they have a meeting this time. Um, they work on, uh, as I mentioned, sort of uh, purpose requests from working groups, but also protocols that, that are different from the ones that we commonly use. So they look at the emerging cryptography, the issues that might come up. Um, next is Gaia. So, as I said, catch it this time. Gaia is a, a group that works on the internet protocols in uh, places where you may not have power or you may have very limited computers, but you have, um, you have some form of, of, uh, of uh, uh, digital uh, phones. Um, so they have been having a workshop every year, and they have a lot of other things. Let's see, I gave them, I don't know why that says proposed PanRG there, sorry. I gave them Green Hills of Earth as their science fiction title. Um, and uh, you can check out everybody's agendas in the regular IETF agenda. So, so this is a good thing to, uh, to, uh, to check. Um, another of our really cool groups, and, and this is another reason I like following um, Lars, as he came up with some very good groups, um, he and the chairs, is Human Rights Protocol Considerations. Um, the chairs are Avri Doria and Niels Tenover. Um, some of you were probably in the Chicago meeting. They presented in the technical plenary. And they gave a very good talk. And then Dave Clark, who was the very first chair of the IAB, also gave a talk about this topic. So I recommend looking at the video of that. Uh, Dave's talk was fantastic, and it was a really good session. Um, they are about to publish their first document, which is a review of the research in this space. Um, they're developing some new work, including how does the internet relate to the right for free assembly, for the ability to have protests or to have meetings. Um, and there's a piece that I think would be very pertinent to them, and there might be some, somebody with interest in that, which is the question of equality, the, the rights for all to be equal, and how that pertains for uh, internet protocols. Um, you know, what can protocols do that would support uh, the various forms of equality that, that are considered? So they base their work on the United Nations Human Rights um, Declaration. Um, and they, they have a quite rigorous and, and energetic approach to things. Um, they're meeting, and uh, they meet usually with us. Um, but please do join that. That's a good meeting. Um, another, as I mentioned, is the Internet Congestion Control Research Group. And I didn't give them a science fiction picture, but this is a picture from 2005 of the Internet at that time. So there's something science fictional about the size of the internet and our inability to visualize it. Um, this is a great group too, if you're into math and control theory, that's a group for you. Um, and uh, we're looking actually, uh, Michael has decided to step down. We're looking for a new chair, co-chair for that. Um, another group is the information centric networking group. Um, this uh, they got a uh, cover that talks about the BEAT cluster because they have um, 
they have a very, they're thinking about a completely new approach to the internet where you route on names instead of on addresses. Um, and you don't actually care where, where anything is, you only care about the name of the content and some cryptographic information about the content. Um, and th there's a very active participation in that. Uh, I don't know how many people have heard of that before, but, but that group is, is going very strong and um, will publish some informational uh, specifications um, for the protocols, but there's a lot of implementation and deployment. Like, like the ITF, the IITF is very interested in work that can be coded and then can be demonstrated. It just often is code work that's further away from deployment. Um, a relatively new group is the Measurement and Analysis for Protocols group, which curates excellent uh, measurement work, um, forward-looking measurement work, may start to do some work on, on um, ways to bring together the different types of measurement infrastructures that there are. Uh, Miria and Dave are the, the uh, chairs of that. And I gave them this cover because of Occam's scalpel. Um, because good measurement work, um, it's easy to do, to have measurements and, and not actually have much information out of it. So you have to use the equivalent of an Occam's razor to kind of sort out what is meaningful here when you have a lot of measurement. And the presentations that they have do that. Um, and there's no implication that they, uh, they wear little elf hoods and stuff like that, but okay. So then I'm gonna consolidate uh, the next part of this into, um, into to one slide. Uh, I, we have three faithful ends here, the N star, not really. Um, the network coding, which I mentioned before, um, uh, which has, uh, which, for example, would work on questions of how can we get FEC to work well for QUIC? Uh, now, they haven't made that connection, and it would be nice for them to do that. Uh, they have experts on FEC. How can we use them well in the, in the relation to the ITF? Um, so if you have good ideas about that, I'm interested to hear from you. Network function, function virtualization is um, a, uh, a kind of fad in industry. There's a lot of startups in the NFV space. Uh, actually precisely defining what NFV is is not easy. Um, and so this group has uh, a need for more um, uh, more focus of what is NFV and what are the hard things that are useful for the ITF. Um, it's chaired by people who are very active in the space, but it definitely is an interesting thing to get that one into a productive focus. And finally, the NMRG, Network Management Research Group. Um, this one has been around since, I think, the beginning of the IRTF uh, with changes of chairs. And one reason it exists is that there's a lot of network management re research which is not which is focused on, on theoretical considerations then brought to practical use cases. So there's been a value to bringing the academic community here for years and years. Um, and uh, I, I think that they have definitely been an engine for asking questions about the way we do network management in the ITF. That is a topic which has evolved a great deal. Um, but it's undoubtedly 25 years old. So. Um, so it, it, it's, um, it's our senior member. Um, and I gave them the three companions from Doctor Who because I had three ends. And uh, I didn't want to leave Doctor Who out of this. Um, then we get to the thing-to-thing -thing research group. We have a bunch of protocols in the ITF that are serving the purposes of, thing, of things, of, of the Internet of Things, um, which are working on the idea that you need low energy protocols, you need um, uh, protocols that can be made into small forms for condensed or low capability networks. Um, but but um, there's clearly research in security, scaling, many other aspects of that space. So Karsten and Ari, who are very active in the ITF side of things, decided to form a research group on this as well. Um, and they have been trying to be very experimental in how they do their meetings as well with focus groups and facilitators and things like that. Um, I gave them, in honor of our location, the Rossum's Universal Robots um, picture because this is a very famous play that was written here in, in the Czech Republic 
about robots who become conscious and uh, want need to be treated like humans. And it was from a long time ago, the 20s. So, uh, so um, I don't think that we're going to solve our thing-to-thing -thing scaling problems because the things will become sentient. That would be probably make it easier and harder at the same time. <laughs> but, um, but that's what that, that research group is about. And I think you would, uh, I think they also are very eager to have participants from the many spaces they're working in this. I mean, everybody's eager to have you join. You're here because we want you to join the RTF meetings. Um, we also have some emerging groups, as I've mentioned. Um, there's a, so I'm going to describe what the proposed research group path is, but we have one that is already formally a proposed research group called the Path Aware Networking Group. There have been a bunch of tries at this topic. This is the topic where the host or the end system can make a good decision about shall I use my, uh, shall I use my, uh, um, uh, my LT, L, um, LTE or shall I use the Wi-Fi? Uh, should I try to use an address which will get me routed through this or that provider? Shall I try to control the quality of service on my path in some way? Um, so there have been lots of work on this. Spencer has been a veteran of many of them, actually, including one called Trig Chan, <laughs> that I feel very fond of from my days as the area director for that. Um, but so Jen Linkova and Brian Tremell are picking this up. They're just starting. This is a time to get in at the beginning, uh, at the start of the path, so to speak. And then, as I mentioned, we also have a side meeting to think about ways that we could work on um, distributed internet infrastructure. This is another. Perennial, we've had things like the P2P research group that tried to have very decentralized internet. But this one is taking up the increasingly high, high state of development of cryptographic algorithms like crypto ledgers, blockchain. And how can we make these things, uh, as I mentioned, scale well, but also how can we build them into our protocols in sensible ways that will stand the test of time? Um, I'm also very interested in forming a group similar to the, to the uh, CFRG that's on privacy enhancing technologies. Um, and that is something that you'll, you'll watch the space. Probably next time we'll have a, a, a meeting about that. So what's the vision of the IRTF in the Alice and Mencken years? Um, I continue to want to have academic and industry research folks here. Um, and I, have been at the ITF since the time when um, when it was more researchers than industry. So I know that that's a good state to have a lot of interaction between those two groups. Um, I also want to make sure that we continue to be a place where the global aspects of internet are considered. Um, and you know, Gaia Gaia is is uh, very interested in meeting in places that they're not that are in. I guess what's the word for this? Um, the Great South, meeting in places that are not Europe and the U.S. Um, and uh, you know the and Japan, um, and trying to make sure we're engaging enough people there. Uh, in addition, um, continue to incubate and continue to find new ways that we can work well. And I have a couple specific items. One is. Right now, we do, we do RFCs. And for most people who are professors or grad students or young professors not tenured, an RFC is not a very useful thing for your portfolio. Um, we did add an ability to use the DOE referencing, DOI referencing for them. But that doesn't really change it. It doesn't help your tenure. So I'm very interested and hope that the ISG will help me with the idea of creating a, a journal publication path for some of the work from the IRTF. Um, whether we actually make our own open access journal or we, public, or we have a uh, editorial board so that things which are not called RFCs are the equivalent of journal articles is still to be determined, but we're working on that. Um, we'll continue to collaborate with some of the established academic groups, including ACM, as we did with the Applied Networking Research Workshop. And looking into collaboration as well with Usenix. Usenix may actually be our path towards the uh, open access journal discussion. Um, now, how does a group get formed? That's the part. Um, 
I mentioned to you that Lars made it easier to become a group. So it's quite hard to become a working group. You have to go through a lot of hurdles. Many groups don't make it when they do a BOF. Um, there's lots of guidance on this. The idea for the research groups is that we don't know what the outcome is going to be. We can't say necessarily. So we don't want to. We don't want to do as much constraining at the beginning as we might do for a working group. Um, so we have the idea that you can become a proposed research group and get a tryout for a year, um, and then decide is this going to continue or not. Now that doesn't mean everybody can just form a proposed research group. So what are the criteria? One is there needs to be an active coterie of people who are advocating to do this work. We need to feel that people will be somewhere doing the work together. Usually a mailing list is a start, but do you have a plan for how you would connect people? Are you going to meet at certain conferences? How can you make sure you have a good crew of good people involved? The qualities of the leadership are really important, and that is really kind of a personnel. So, these I star leadership jobs are kind of personnel jobs in a lot of ways. And a role that I have is to interview folks and see if I think that, that the leadership would make sense. Um, and then also, can you articulate one of these roles? Can you articulate that it's connected with the ITF's mission or the futures in some good way? Um, as I mentioned, PanRG is a proposed RG. So they're starting their one year clock. And probably we'll have. Um, uh, DIN be a proposed research group next to IETF, um, and they might not still be called that. One of the questions is, is that really a sufficiently descriptive name? But that's how it works, and um, I think that's a good approach. Um, so um, there we go. All right, so you could start doing this survey now while I uh, call for questions and stuff, um, because I've been told that they really, that our edu team, um, Miriam is the representative of the edu team here, really wants to make sure you do the survey. And I hope you enjoyed this. And um, uh, I have time for lots of time for questions. And if the answers aren't like amusing enough to you, I'm showing you my kittens with a computer with an IETF sticker. So that's something. Um, so does anyone have any questions? Yeah, and this is the survey link. Um, so. You can fill out your survey. I'm going to, I'm going to watch and make sure people are filling out their surveys. Um, OK, so does anyone have questions about anything I said or anything about the RGs or the IRTF? I could quiz you. What is the I star? <laughs> What's the connection between the IRTF and the IAB? It's complicated. How? <laughs> OK. So um, that's it. That's all I have. But um, if you have questions, come up and talk to me. I hope to see you. In fact, I'm counting on seeing you. I've memorized your faces, and I'm counting on seeing you in one or another of the IRTF groups. So be there. We're the cool kids, right? Everyone says that, but we are. Um, OK? Yeah. I'm going to put the kittens back now. Yeah.